houses is a very old ride. We've been trying to find out where it came from and what it really means. Some people think it's about something that really happened. A terrible disease called the plague that was quite common hundreds of years ago. No one knew what caused it or how to stop it. It was so bad that in 1348 and 1349, one out of every three people in the country died of it. That's why it was called the Black Death. One of the signs of the plague was a red mark, a sort of red ring on the victim's chest. This may have been the ring of ring of roses. In those days, rich people used to sniff pauses of flowers so as to avoid having to smell the stinking streets around them. Sneezing was another early sign of the plague. So, a tissue, a tissue, and people really did fall down and die. We now know that plague germs were carried on black rats that passed them on to humans. But 600 years ago, no one knew about germs. All they knew was that thousands of people died of the plague. And for hundreds of years, the disease kept coming back, right up to the last great plague of 1665. But plague wasn't the only terrible disease carried by germs. In the 1800s, many thousands of people died of cholera, and children were often the worst affected. In some districts, only half of all the children live to the age of five. We now know that it was caused by cholera germs in drinking water. Germs so small that we can't even see them with the naked eye. This is a culture plate used to grow germs. It's a dish with a special jelly in it. Now watch what happens when the laboratory technician touches it with her fingers. At first there's nothing to see, but if the culture plate is left in the dark at the same temperature as our bodies for 24 hours, the germs have a chance to grow. Now she goes to see what's happened. The parts touched by her fingers are covered with little blobs. To find out what these blobs are, she looks at them through a microscope. Each little blob is made up of millions of germs, each of which has grown from a single germ on her finger. Of course, all germs aren't harmful. In fact, many of them actually help us, but some are our enemies. And once they get into our bodies, they start growing. This is speeded up, but you can see what happens. Of course, without a microscope, we can't see germs. They're far too small. But suppose, just suppose, that one day you were walking down a school corridor and you heard something strange. Sanitation systems break down. When sewage gets into the water supply, we try to get into drinking water, sir. 
Then the humans don't stand a chance. Well, well done, men. But you haven't been doing so well recently, have you? Except for some of the Asian countries. It's about time you had an outbreak of cholera or dysentery here. So keep on your toes, take any chances at all, get in the water supply. Now what about those tubes? Carried by insects and animals, where are they? Ah. You lot were responsible for the Black Death, weren't you? Well, well done. But you haven't been doing so well recently, have you? If only you could bring over our friend the mosquito, sir. That would give our friend malaria and yellow fever germs a real chance. The pity is that the climate's no good, sir. In spite of all this hygiene nonsense, we haven't done so badly. We jump onto fleas and flies, and the flies flee, and the fleas fly into all sorts of interesting places. The sort of place we like, sir, is on animals. That's the way we travel, sir. Animals and insects. A dog's hair is nice and comfortable. The only trouble is interfering humans start mucking things up. Soap and water. Mm. Disinfectant. Mm. Plasters over cuts. Mm. It's awful. Awful. Doesn't give us a sporting chance, sir. Never gets anywhere near soap and water, you fools. Keep an eye open for uncovered food. There's always a chance for you to get in there. Which reminds me, where are all those food paddy germs? All busy working, sir. Busy working. Eating themselves sick if I know them. But well, what have you been doing? There were lots of us busy at work in this girl's cut finger, sir. But we couldn't get out. She was silly enough to take off the plaster and whoosh, out we jumped into this cream bun. And there we were, splashing around in the artificial cream, having a grand old time. Then this boy, he came along and he spotted the bun. Of course, he didn't know we were in it, and at first he felt fine, nothing wrong at all. But like that night, he knew about it all right, you got terrible sickness, stomach pains and diarrhoea. Oh, well done, well done. I hope you didn't get better. Oh, no, sir, not at once anyway. Lovely. Tell me more, tell me more. Well, in the hospital laboratory, they put some of us from the diarrhoea onto this special jelly. Then they locked us away so we made more and more of us. Next day, we were taken out and looked at down a microscope. It wasn't nice being looked at like that. See, that's me, one of those right in the middle there. All right, all right, get on with it. Next we were tested to see if we went lumpy. If we went lumpy, that meant we were harmful. There, we were harmful, all right. Glad to hear it. You had me worried for a moment. What happened next? They found out what sort of germs we were by comparing the patterns made on the plates with other germs. Then they could tell exactly what was wrong with the boy. Yes, yes, yes. But what happened to the boy who was ill? Did he get better? I'm afraid so. Sorry, sir. I did my best. Surely someone's done better than that. You! What about you? Yes, sir. Mission accomplished, sir. Who are you? Communicable diseases. Airborne unit, sir. Germs came through the air. Colds. Coughs, sneezes and flu, sir. Ah, oh, yes. I've been having good reports about you recently. Anything to report? Why, yes, sir. We're the most successful unit in the Communicable Disease Division. Remember, sir, you awarded several of our men medals after that flu epidemic last year. Let me show you, sir. This is how we get around. Sally started us going. That's her, sir. Even though she used the hanky, some of us germs were able to escape and achieve lift-off, sir. Once we were airborne, we managed to stay in the air long enough to reach our targets and start them sneezing too. We've speeded it up a bit, but you'll get the idea, sir. Some children didn't even bother to use a handkerchief, 
so I sped it around even faster. Soon afterwards, look what happened. Total victory. That's the spirit. That's what you like to hear. Now, is there anyone I haven't heard from? You. Who are you? Germs. We come into contact with people and give them chicken pox, measles, and tumor measles and such like. We can do this just by passing from an infected person when people are close to each other or when they are touching. We can pass from person to person through their breath. Hmm, that sounds good. But why haven't I heard more about you recently? Surely you've had plenty of training. Well, sir, there's this thing called immunization. That's what really hurts us. Immunisation? What's that? These babies are being immunised against diphtheria and other diseases. They are deliberately being given small amounts of us germs, sir. Oh, good. <laughs> Splendid. What fools these humans are. No, sir, not good. Not for us anyway. You see, sir, they captured some of us and did something which made us so weak that when given to a human, all we could do was stir our body's defences against further attack. When we attack properly later on, the body's all ready for us. We fight us off without much difficulty. We can't win a battle in any human who has been immunised against us. That's terrible news. But tell me, is every human being immunised in this way? Not everyone, I'm glad to say. But lots are, and that makes our work very hard. Yes, it's very unfair. Well, don't give up, dear James. Just going to have to try harder. Now, here are your instructions. <coughs> hey, who's that? Who's there? After her, James! Keep away from people with colds. Germs away. Yeah! 